When people ask me, what does it take to be happy? I always tell them one word, progress. Progress equals happiness. Even if you're not where you want to be yet, if you're on the road, if you're improving, if you're making progress, you're going to love it. You're going to feel alive. On the other hand, it doesn't matter how successful you are. If you stop growing, you start dying inside. Now, how does this relate to this session on Breakthrough? Well, I'll say it's really simple. If you and I want to know what it takes to be happy, we have to understand what is our current blueprint of how our life's supposed to be. Now, what do I mean by blueprint? Well, we have a story in our head of how life's supposed to be. Some people's story is you work hard in school, you become really great, you're a nice person, you're a good person, and then you grow up and you take care of yourself and you find the ideal man and you fall in love and you have a white picket fence and you have three perfect children and you live happily ever after. Somebody else's story, the old story was, you work really hard in school, you excel in college, you go to work for a big corporation, and you move up through the ranks until you're the president or chairman of the company and you become successful and respected throughout life. These are some old stories. Obviously, the stories that we hear today of what people's lives are supposed to be like are completely diverse. We no longer have these little archetypes. But one archetype still seems to remain. And that archetype is, in order for you to really feel like you're enough, many people believe they have to achieve an enormous amount. They may, may do it in different ways. They may do it by building a company and taking it public when they're 27 or 25 years old, or you know, they find and create a new technology, or they become a very special doctor. But we live in a culture in the West that teaches people that you're not enough unless you do something really special and unique. And we define special and unique in interesting ways. A school teacher is not special and unique. A mother who stays home with her children day and night, sculpting their minds, their bodies, their souls, and their future is not special. We live in a world today where we treat teachers like they're nobody and pay them accordingly. And we wonder why our children seem to have challenges of learning and growing or being engaged in school. We spend thousands of dollars on some item like a computer, but what we look at overall, we invest in for the teacher and for that person who's the personal connection with them is so small. We live in a society where many women look down and say, well, you're just a housewife, you're just a mother. See, some of the pain we have in our society is not because there's one right or one wrong approach, but because we try to make everybody fit into some particular approach to life. Here's what's gonna make you happy or make you unhappy in life. It's real simple, let's do a quick test. If you're in a situation right now where you look at your life, I know there's an area of your life that you probably feel pretty darn good about. Even if you're not happy with your finances, I bet you feel damn good close to your kids. Or if you're not close to your kids, uh, maybe you don't have any kids, maybe you feel really good about your career. If you're doing not so good in your career, maybe you got a really great body that you've trimmed down or strengthened up or you, know, you really shaped yourself the way you want, muscularly or in the way you look. Or if that's not happening, maybe you feel a really special connection with God or really close to your mother or father or your family, whatever. Almost everybody has an area of their life they feel really good about if they're honest, and if they're fair to themselves. What's an area of your life you really feel happy about? And I want you to think about it for a moment, truthfully. What's an area in your life today that if you wanted to be happy about it, you really could feel proud about it? You could feel like it's an area you're doing darn well in. And if you're really hard on yourself, there's still an area. What's an area? I want you to think of it right now. And I want you to think of that area, whether it's your body or your finances or your career or your intimate relationship or your relationship with your kids, or your relationship with your creator, Whatever it is, I want you to think about why are you happy with that area of your life right now today? Why are you happy with that area of your life right now today? Really think about it. If you were in a seminar with me, I'd have you write this down. And if you can, you can put me on hold here for a second because I'd like to reveal to you what the formula is for happiness. And if I say there's a formula for happiness and here's what it is, you're gonna go, yeah, yeah, sure, that's what he says. But if you put down the answer and we can see the formula is real without me telling you what it is, you get to look at your own life and say it matches. You're gonna know this is right. So you could stop this right now if you want, put me on hold and just write down what's an area of your life you're really, really happy about, you're really pleased with, or you could be if you wanted to focus on it. And why are you happy with that part of your life right now? Even if you're not happy with everything, what's the area you're happy with and why? Put me on hold right now or if you're not gonna do that, just think for a moment, why, specifically, be real, why? Now, when I ask this, if you turn me back on now, if I ask this of an audience, I'll have people write this down for a few minutes and I'll call on people and I'll say, share with the person next to you first, what are you happy about and why are you happy in that area? And be specific. 
And after they share, I'll have people stand up, I'll call in a variety of people, and I say, ma'am, tell me, what are you happy about? And she'll say, well, honestly, I'm really happy with my body. She goes, I never thought I'd say that, but I used to be so unhappy with it, and you know, I finally, I, I did some things, I pushed myself through, and now I exercise regularly, and you know, I'm not perfect, but I feel fit, I feel strong, I feel energetic, and that's really, I don't know, it just feels good to me. Now, I say to everybody, I'm now gonna show you what the formula for happiness is, and it's real simple, I wanna reveal it to you so you don't ever forget it. Whenever you're happy with an area of your life, it's because right now, your current life experience, I call it your LC, your life conditions, the conditions of your life, your life conditions in that area, match or are equal to your blueprint, your story, your belief about how life should be in that area. So this woman says to me, I'm really happy with my body because it's not perfect. Her blueprint is I don't need to be perfect, but it's so much better than it was. I'm fit and I'm strong and I have this energy. Her mental blueprint says, I should be fit, strong, and have energy. I don't need to be perfect, but I should be that way. Well, when my life, my body matches how I think it should be, I feel good about my life. I'll ask somebody else. I'll say, you know, tell me an area you're happy with. Someone else will say, well, I'm really happy with my career. And why? Well, I'm doing better than I even thought I would be. I mean, I'm ahead of the schedule of where I hoped I'd be at this stage. I'm working at this level in this company, and I have these skills and this ability, and it's even better than I thought. Well, once again, listen, this person's happy with this area of their life because their current life conditions in the area called their career are even better than they expected they would be. Better than their blueprint. Better than their belief of how it should be. If it's really better, you tend to be over the moon. Well, one woman would say, you know, I, I kind of tell you, I said, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my whole life. How come? She goes, because I have this man in my life and I'm in love with him and he loves me and I can be myself with him. And he, we have this incredible intimacy and this passion and we want to be with each other all the time and, and I never get bored with him. Well, what's her blueprint? You want to be with somebody that you can have total intimacy with, somebody who you love and loves you. Those are part of her rules, her beliefs of how it should be. She said, you know, it needs to be, I never want to be with anybody else. I want to be with them every moment. Her blueprint about how life should be and the way she lives, her relationships even better than she hoped. When it's better than you hoped, you're gonna to be totally excited. So think about this then. What's an area you're not happy with? Let's see if we can find the formula for unhappiness. If the formula for happiness is to be able to meet your expectations or exceed them, that really makes you excited. But to be happy, you gotta at least meet it. It doesn't have to be perfect. But if you generally are meeting what you expect you want from your life in that area, you feel good. Life conditions match blueprint, feel good. So what makes you feel bad? What creates pain, stress, frustration? Real easy way to figure it out. Answer this question. What's an area of your life you're not happy with? I mean, be honest with yourself. And even if your life is great in all kinds of ways, I'm sure there's an area you'd like to improve. Anybody who's honest, if they're doing great in their career, very often they don't take care of their body so much. If they're really focused on their body, you know, very often they find themselves in a position where they're not spending enough time with their kids. Or if they're spending time with their kids, their intimate relationship's not doing so well. Because it's the nature of human beings to focus on areas they feel comfortable with and strong in and give those time in the areas they don't feel so strong and they go, I don't have time for it. What they're really saying is I don't feel very competent in that area. So what's an area of your life that you are not as happy with? I mean, it's healthy, honestly, to look at areas and say, I don't like it, I want more. This whole concept of a breakthrough is about how do I close the gap between where I am right now and where I want to be. That's what we're here to do. It's like, here's where I want to be, here's where I am. It's healthy to see there's a gap. That makes me have this hunger, this drive to grow, to feel alive, to expand as a human being. So what's an area you're not pleased with? Is it your body? Is it your finances? Is it your career? Is it your spiritual life or lack thereof in terms of feeling connected in that area? Is it your kids? Right? What's the area? What's the area that's not where you want it to be? And then answer for a moment, why aren't you happy with that area of your life right now? Have you ever thought about something you wanted to do and you talk yourself out of it? I, I remember going to see Zig Ziglar, who I consider the number one motivational speaker on the planet. And Dr. Norman Vincent Peale when he was alive and Robert Shuler. I, I used to see them and I would 
be so pumped up and inspired after hearing Jim Rohn, who recently passed, one of the great motivational speakers of all time, and, and Charlie Tremendous Jones. And, and I, I would go to my car pumped up, saying, yes, 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 I can. And then after a while, my mental condition would kick in. And I would say, Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't even know who your parents are. Les Brown, you can't do that. You failed twice in school. Come on. You ever thought about something you wanted to do and, and you talk yourself out of it? There's a proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. That's why it's important that you make it a point every day to listen to Paul, to listen to me, to review these lessons, to, to get them deep, not only in the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind, and get them in your spirit. Well, how often should I do it? Do it until you are producing the results. That's how often you should do it. And, and you never stop, because once you stop, that's when those negative thoughts will come back. Once you stop, that's when you will begin to doubt yourself. Once you stop, I'm telling you what I know. Yes. Every day, it's a selling job on you. It's possible. I can do this. I can make this happen. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. It's possible. Yes, your dream is possible. Say that to yourself every day. Feed your mind with words that you write and words that you hear and words that you speak to yourself. Feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. Say to yourself, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Even when you have no evidence to point to, say to yourself, it's possible. There's nothing as powerful as a made-up mind.